Good morning. It's Tuesday, August the 27th, 2013. This is the Agoracom News TV. This is a program where we go over the various different news releases out, try to find the best of those on a daily basis, and uh, help you to find some good companies to do your homework on, and hopefully find some investment winners in there as well. I'm Alan Barry Labucan. I'm the chief market commentator for Agoracom. We're down to the last week of summer here before the Labor Day long weekend, and uh, as usual, it's a bit of a slow period as far as the news goes. This is also a pretty good time usually for seasonality. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see during this part of the year that um, uh, stocks tend to trade a lot lower volumes, and that can create some uh, very good opportunities. We do, we've done a lot of shows over the summertime with a lot, covering a lot of great companies. Uh, and so I think it's time to look over your shopping list and uh, maybe uh, try to find some of those bargains that are happening this weekend, this week, uh, the last week of um, August. So uh, naturally there's a little less news than we've been seeing recently, but I still found uh, five really good news releases here to talk about. So we'll get right into it. Uh, the first company that I wanted to talk about today is a company called Galantis Gold. Uh, they uh, received core drilling results from their OMAG uh, gold property near OMAG County, Tyrone, Northern Ireland. Uh, core 147 was drilled on the central Joshua vein by uh, their in-house crew and rig. Uh, the results averaged 12.4 grams per ton gold over a true width a vein of 2.8 meters. Uh, the top of the mineralized intersect is estimated to be at a vertical depth of 137 meters, so very close to uh, surface. The hole was terminated at a downhole length of 171 meters. Uh, core 147 is the second deepest intersect yet drilled on the Joshua vein. It is situated approximately 50 meters south of core 103 which as the deepest intersect so far found 8.4 grams per ton gold over a true width of 4.5 me meters at a vertical depth of 160.6 meters. Uh, their core 11114B collared close to core 147 intersected 6.5 uh, grams per ton gold over a true width of 1.1 meters. So they're, in, they've got, they're getting an understanding of the uh, high grade uh, in their drilling. Uh, they noted that a follow-up core uh, has been uh, core drilling has been uh, commenced near core 147, which targets the vein at a shallower depth, so closer to the surface. Uh, the J Joshua vein is so far known to extend over 836 meters in long strike. The current geological model, which is the latest core result, further supports indicates a high gold accumulation along an approximate 325 meter southern, southern central strike length, which is open to depth. It's a quote from Mr. Phelps, who commented, and I quote, Joshua Vein continues to reveal itself with a further excellent drill result and has justified the company's continuing exploration commitment, end quote. Um, so there's a project in uh, in Ireland, Northern Ireland. We've been uh, this is the second company I've recently talked about in Northern Ireland. Ireland, uh, not an area that I've seen a lot of drilling, but this is a second high grade uh, kind of project I've seen in the uh, in Northern Ireland. So it's a good one to uh, do some homework on. The stock symbol on that is G A L, and it trades on the Venture Exchange. The next company uh, is Continental Gold. They released the results for six diamond drill holes at, in their Veda Sur a vein system and two drill holes in their Al Ala Estera area as part of the company's exploration program at the Beritica project in Antiquia, Colombia. Uh, eight drills are currently on site as part of the company's Phase 4 Diamond Drill Program for 2013-2014. Their goal is delivering robust mineral resource growth and upgrading inferred resources into the measured and indicated categories and under National Instrument 43-101 guidelines. Highlights from their um, uh, drilling, all five underground ho drill holes 
and a more deeply drilled uh, surface collared hole in Veda Sur were successful in, in in filling the deposit, extending existing veins, and encountering new veins outside of the current resource envelope. Uh, one of their holes had a broad high-grade interval, uh, which include 28.4 meters at 20.5 grams per ton gold and 135 grams per ton silver. Uh, and uh, they had a high-grade uh, subinterval in there of 1.35 meters at 82 grams per ton gold and 54 grams per ton silver. Um, they had another hole that had 10.9 meters of 10.8 grams per ton gold and 85 grams of silver. Uh, included in there was a one meter interval of 97.4 grams per ton gold and 510 grams per ton silver. There's a quote from uh, Ari Sussman, who is the chief executive officer of uh, Continental Gold, and he stated, and I quote, Buretika continues to deliver robust sur surprises. Uh, Busy 343 deviated significantly to the northeast from its intended location, yet ended up significantly extending Veda Sur. The drilled dimensions of the Veda Sur vein have now increased at a depth to approximately 700 meters along strike by 1,300 meters vertically. Additionally, new Silver Ridge veins continue to be intersected to the north of the system. With over 50 holes in the queue for logging, cutting, and assaying, and eight drill rigs turning, we anticipate the latter part of 13 will provide a great deal of useful information for the re next resource estimate update. Uh, their uh, stock symbol is CNL on the Toronto Exchange. Now, you know, uh, Columbia is a pretty risky place to be doing exploration. Certain parts of Colombia are more risky than other parts of Colombia, but I just can't ignore a project that is getting these kind of healthy intersections uh, of such high-grade gold. Um, uh, and so I'm going to be doing some more homework on this one. It looks like they've got some good potential to uh, increase their resource calculations. Uh, improve, they've did a lot of infill drilling so they can upgrade their resource calculations. And uh, it looks like they're extending uh, into zones where they have previously done no uh, no drilling. So it, it's a very interesting project, again, in Colombia. So want to want to keep that in mind uh, when you're doing your research on this one. Again, the stock symbol is CNL, and that trades on the Toronto Exchange. Uh, the next company is uh, St. Andrew Goldfields. Uh, they provided an update on recent underground definition drilling program at their Taylor project located in the western portion of their land package in Timmins Mining District, northeastern Ontario. Uh, the drill program focused on the eastern portion of the 1,004 lens of the West Porphyry Zone. Uh, highlights of the drilling uh, included one hole had 11.6 Five six grams per ton gold over 16.2 meters, uh, including 12.48 uh, grams per ton gold over 14.7 meters. Another hole had 5.49 grams per ton gold over 27.7 meters, uh, 8.25 grams per ton gold uncut. Uh, so they've got some high grade um, uh, when you have these uh, potential for nugget effects. They do these cutting of the grades, so that's why this company gives both the uh, uh, uncut and the cut grades. Um, they have to sort of cap how high they can put in there uh, simply because it could, um, uh, nugget e gold could uh, affect the representative grade, so that's a cautious thing that they do to sort of prevent that from happening. Um, the another hole had 6.2, 6.62 grams per ton gold over 18.3 meters, which was 9.79 grams per ton gold uncut. Another hole had 5.92 grams per ton gold over 28.2 meters. Uh, I, I, um, they didn't do an uncut number on that one. Uh, they had another hole with 14.12 grams per ton gold over 18.6 meters, which was 21.67 grams per ton gold uncut. 
Um, and uh, another hole had 8.64 meters or 8.64 grams per ton gold over 10.7 meters. So, you know, they're getting very good grades of gold over very significant intersections uh, in the potential for some very high, um, high grades as well. Uh, there's a quote from uh, Jacques Tiron, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of St. Andrew's, St. Andrew Goldfields, and he stated, and I quote, this most recent phase of drilling at Taylor has returned impressive results, which further encourages us to continue our work at Taylor. The recent drill results on the 1004 lens on the WPZ, which is the largest and most important area, demonstrates the potential for wide and high-grade gold mineralization. Over the next few months, the focus of our team will be to carefully analyze this information to better understand the geologically and structurally complex deposit. We continue to believe that Taylor has the potential to become an important contributor to the future of SAS, uh, end quote. So um, very good results on that company, very good intersections, good, really good grades. It's in Timmins, Ontario, uh, definitely one you want to do your homework on. This one's uh, stock symbol is SAS, and that trades on the Toronto Exchange. Uh, next company is Metanor Resources. Um, Metanor has a record gold pour of 1,001 ounces last week. This pour corresponds to one week's production at the Bachelor our project. Uh, additionally, they ramped up uh, activities continuing on levels 10 to 14, where the reserves are located based on their National Instrument 43101 technical report, which was dated April the 26, 2011, which is available on CEDAR. Uh, this sort of zone corresponds to the east zone as described in the recent drill results published August the 22nd, 2013. I'm sure you can find that on the company's website. Also, development drill and drilling activities are continuing toward the new west zone of the projects on level 12 and 13. Ghislaine Morin, uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of Metanor, added, and I quote, we're very grateful to all of our employees for their efforts, which are key to Metanor reaching its goal of commercial production in a responsible manner and in a secure environment. Uh, this weekly record pour confirms that Metanor has the required resources in place and is well on its way toward reaching commercial production, end quote. I'm pretty sure that that bachelor project is in Quebec. Uh, I, I'm, I'm certain it's in Canada. Uh, you can check that on the company's website. The stock symbol for that one is MTO. Um, you know, here's a company that's, um, you know, growing their production. Um, and um, I'm sure down the road we'll see some data on the numbers on their uh, costs and how much, if they're, you know, making a, turning a profit. Um, gold has definitely been coming up recently. So, uh, uh, you know, they've got a better... Uh, a price to sell it in than uh, earlier, uh, just in the last couple months. And the final news release today is from Alpha Minerals. Uh, they responded to Fission's proposal. Yesterday I talked at length about the uh, press release that Fission put out uh, regarding a takeover offer that they um, uh, put out uh, for Alpha Minerals. These two companies are 50-50 joint venture partners on the Patterson, uh, Patterson Lake South project. And um, you can look at yesterday's show to find my uh, what I talked about on that. And now Alpha has put out their response. Uh, so I wanted to talk about that. They noted that they received on August the 23rd a non-binding proposal from Fission Uranium, their joint venture partner on the Patterson Lake project on which Fission would be prepared to consider making an offer to acquire all of the outstanding shares of Alpha. The proposal, which is described in a news release issued by Fission earlier today, that was yesterday, stipulated that it would expire on August the 25th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Alpha has formed a special committee comprised of three independent directors, and engaged uh, financial advisors and legal counsel. 
After a careful review of the proposal by Alpha directors and its special committee, together with legal and financial advisors, Alpha provided Fission with a written response prior to the expiry time, advising that the timing of the proposal provided little opportunity for Alpha to consider the complex structure and content of the proposal. Alpha has also raised concerns about the timing of the proposal in relation to the continuing active and very material drill program at PLS. In light of these considerations, Alpha requested additional time from Fission beyond the expiry time to consider the proposal and its implications to Alpha shareholders. Alpha has been an active participant in continuing dialogue with Fission over the past several months regarding consolidation. Alpha and its team of financial and legal advisors wish to review further the interest expressed by Fission in its proposal forwarded on Friday. Alpha and its advisors look forward to continuing the dialogue with, with Fission on the matter of consolidating PLS and maximizing shareholder value. Alpha will continue to update its shareholder on the progress of the proposal as and when information is available. So um, yesterday, or early in yesterday, um, Fission uh, expressed that they had uh, put a proposal to Alpha um, and uh, that it wasn't accepted and that they were considering uh, the possibility of a hostile takeover. It now looks like the Alpha Minerals felt that they received that on a Friday afternoon, had to make a decision by sa uh, Sunday, uh, didn't have enough time to do that, but is still interested in, uh, wanted more time, uh, which I think sounds reasonable, and uh, they wanted to, uh, and they still want to consider that uh, proposal. So, you know, I'm sure we're seeing the legal mechanization of a take hostile uh, takeover offer, which who knows may turn friendly down the road or, you know, or it was attempted to be friendly. It looks like it's got the potential of being hostile. Who knows, maybe down the road it will get friendly again. Um, it does look like Alpha's interested in the proposal, but they just have to review it. Uh, thoroughly for their shareholders uh, to and consider all shareholder value, but uh, they are interested in maximizing the shareholder value of the project. Um, I'm a big fan of this project. I think this uh, Patterson Lake South is one of the best discoveries I've seen in many years in Saskatchewan. Uh, it's very high grade. It's got so far for a high grade discovery quite a significant footprint uh, in in the drilling that they've done to sort of get a understanding of the three dimensions of the various zones along strike of this discovery. Uh, it's again very high grade, it's close to surface. These are all things that every major mining company that's involved in uranium uh, will be, I can, I, I can almost, cert I'm certain that every major mining company is looking at this project closely. And so, you know, whether these two companies are able to uh, put it all together into one 100% owned project uh, or not in the next little while will, still remains to be seen. Um, but on those two companies, Alpha Minerals uh, is AMW on the Venture Exchange. Fission is FCU on the Venture Exchange as well. Two really good um, uranium companies. I like this one, this project a lot. I think down the road it will be a mine and it will be a target of a takeover by a major uranium mining company. Uh, whether that's at uh, going after the 50 50 partners or uh, who knows down the road maybe they'll be going after a 100% uh, one company that owns 100%. On that note, um, that's it for the news today. As you know, as I uh, always like to stress, the show is um, which wh what I try to what I do every day is a discipline that I've gone through for several years since I started my Allenberry reports back in 2005. I go through all the press releases on a daily basis. I try to find the best of those to do my homework on, 
And uh, that's how I've found winners, uh, a lot of winners in the past, and I think it's a good discipline that uh, I'm doing the work for you to filter those out. And I, I think that you can find lots of good companies to do your homework on uh, in our uh, morning uh, shows, Monday through Thursday, and to uh, ultimately help you find some winners in there. On that note, uh, I'm going to close, but before closing, I always want to stress that it's important for you to do your homework and speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions. Um, we'll, uh, I look forward to seeing you again on tomorrow's show. Have a great day.